Uh, welcome. I'm doing part two, question one from the February 2016 release of the pre-reg exam. Uh, the first part, I did, I think, a dozen questions, and most of those were uh, math questions, pharmacy calculations, things like that. Uh, where my book comes in, even though we're talking about uh, 200 American drugs, actually 350, uh, if you include the back, is we're talking about using prefixes, infixes, and suffixes as a way to learn uh, more than the 200, more than the 350, uh, and many, many drugs. And I'll show you uh, in this next slide what I mean. Okay. So if we look at the prefixes, and that's a meaningful prefix in the beginning position, glibenclamide, glyclozide, glimepiride, um, antihyperglycemics, it tells you something about them. Uh, they happen to all be sulfonylureas. Now, there's other sulfonylureas that don't exactly uh, conform to the GLI, but the GLI does help you uh, because you understand, okay, well, at least I'm dealing with a diabetic or some kind of diabetic medication. It can be in the infix position that's in the middle of the word. So methylprednisolone is an example in the infix position, while prednisolone and prednisone are both uh, in the prefix position, but we're still talking about prednisone derivatives. Uh, and it still gives us an idea of what this medication is. And then in the suffix position, because there are so many people with cardiovascular issues, hypertension, there's many, many uh, drugs that uh, treat hypertension that are in the exact same class. Uh, so in this case, we have the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, which all end in pril, Captopril, enalapril, facinopril, imidapril, lisinopril, moexapril, perendopril, quinopril, ramopril, trendolopril. You get the idea. So the idea is that we've got now a memorization exam, and it would be better if we were armed with 200, 300 drugs uh, that we know, but which drugs do we pick? And I pick the most prescribed drugs. Uh, and of those, we just take a couple, uh, learn the prefix, the infix or the suffix that has meaning, and that'll help us uh, with our questions. So let's look at uh, one of the case studies uh, on this uh, exam, or well, the first one, the first example. Question one, Mr. A, who is 62 years old, is experiencing an acute attack of gout, and it's highlighted. Mr. A has myocardial infarction three years ago, has mild osteoarthritis, but is otherwise well. He's taking the following medications. Aspirin, 75 milligrams once daily. Immediately we know, uh, in the States we use 81 milligrams, but immediately we know this low-dose aspirin is not for the osteoarthritis. Rather, this aspirin is for uh, keeping the platelets from getting sticky, uh, preventing thrombotic events. Atorvastatin is an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. Uh, this one is for cholesterol lowering. Ramipril. Uh, like we saw before, is an ACE inhibitor, angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitor. And then the cocodamol, uh, we don't call it that here in the States. We call it acetaminophen with codeine. But you can see uh, the two words in there, uh, codeine, paracetamol. Uh, and then that must be uh, for the pain. Although there's uh, no anti-inflammatory in his regimen, which is interesting. Uh, what is the most suitable drug treatment for his acute attack of gout? Okay, so... We have allopurinol, colchicine, diclofenac. Uh, in the States, we have celecoxib rather than etorocoxib, uh, and then febuxostat. But we still know that uh, the coxib stem tells us uh, it's a cyclooxygenase 2 uh, specific inhibitor. Okay, so let's uh, look a little more closely at each part of this question. In the first part, uh, immediately as a pharmacist, I see aspirin and I think acetylsalicylic acid because the sal, S-A-L, lets me know that it's a salicylate, and that has certain issues, uh, certain side effects, certain interactions. I use the V-A-S-T-A-T-I-N, although the Adopted Names Council says that statin is the stem for an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor, that V-A-S-T-A-T-I-N is in rosuvastatin, atorvastatin, uh, all of those uh, HMG-CoAs. The reason I use that infix as well is because there's nystatin that is an antifungal. Uh, children use it for thrush, things like that. 
The pril and ramipril, again, lets us know that it's an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. And then the code from cocodamol uh, is for codeine. The amol is for paracetamol. We say acetaminophen here in the States. But the co lets us know that we're using uh, two drugs uh, and that it's some kind of combination product. Okay? And he has no known drug allergies. Okay. So now I've just put in blue what I've just said, that if you know these stems, then you know what we have. We have a salicylate, an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor, angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitor, and narcotic and non-narcotic analgesic. But what we want to know also is these five other medications, because we've been thrown ten medications, well, nine medications, but ten entities. Uh, and now we have allopurinol, colchicine, diclofenac, atorococcib, and febuxostat. How can we quickly know what they're all for? Well, allopurinol is a xanthine oxidase inhibitor. Uh, I use the mnemonic that it was all purinol in the book. Uh, makes your uh, joints all purinol. You can also take the uric, uh, the URI that's in there, or uh, use that as well. But xanthine oxidase inhibitor. Colchicine comes from colchicum autumnale. Does that help us any? Not really. What we really need to know is, is colchicine an acute or prophylactic medication? And it's an acute medication. Diclofenac ends with the AC. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's an acetic acid derivative, and that's where that AC comes from. Uh, but we know that it's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. But this is one of the non-specific ones, where atorococcib is a cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitor, and that has the coccyx stem, but it's also an NSAID. And then we have febuxostat, which is a xanthine oxidase inhibitor, and it's prophylactic. So let's, instead of answering the question, what is the most suitable drug treatment for his acute attack of gout, let's just look at what is a treatment for gout in the first place. And this is a difficult question, because all five could reasonably be used for gout. So this is where uh, it makes it a little bit tougher. We need to figure out, OK, what issues are we going to have? Well, we have two things. First, it's an acute attack. So immediately we get rid of allopurinol and febuxostat. Those are both prophylactic medications. Then we look at our three acute choices, colchicine, diclofenac, and atorococcib. And we look and we see, is there any kind of interaction? So we're looking for interactions not only with drugs, but with diseases. And we see that he's post-MI. So if this patient has cardiovascular issues, NSAIDs, are not something we can use, and you see the mild osteoarthritis and that he wasn't on an NSAID. So we say, okay, now we understand uh, the NSAID was being avoided um, because of the cardiovascular issue. Let's use a non-NSAID that can work acutely, and that's the answer, colchicine. So we go back to the question itself, and now that we look at it, we know our stems, we know how it all uh, ten entities are four. Uh, we look at the two issues we have, an acute attack of gout and myocardial infarction, and it becomes uh, pretty clear with just a quick scan. Okay, we can rule out allopurinol. It's not prophylactic. No, we don't want an NSAID diclofenac. No, we don't want an NSAID atorococcib febuxostat. No, that's prophylactic. Great. B is the answer, uh, and we move on. So hopefully that's uh, helpful. Um, didn't see a lot of people looking at the uh, first video. So if this is helpful to you and you want me to do other questions, I can. Uh, but otherwise, um, uh, just uh, comment uh, if this helped you out at all.